As an ex-PhD student, I know that we are experts in reading, taking notes efficiently and being able to retrieve them later on at any point, even two, three, four, five years later. And this is all in four parts. There's the pre-reading strategy, there's active reading whilst you read and engaging with the text, there's efficient note taking, and then there's the reviewing and integrating it into your current notes or your current system. In today's video, I'm going to be going through how to read and take notes. Like a PhD, I'll be giving you all of our secrets but I'll be using AI to help me with some of those steps, so making it just that little bit better. If you want to see more videos like this, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm nearly on 400K, so click the subscribe button to help me get there quicker. So step one is the pre-reading strategy. Now, this is very important. A lot of people don't realize that there's some work you have to do before you even begin reading. And if you just jump straight into the reading, you're missing out on these key steps that will help you read and understand the information quicker. And this is broken down into three key steps. So number one is prioritizing. You're identifying the sections to really focus on. Number two is setting a goal. You know why you're reading. Number three is to skim. It allows you to get a grasp of the structure and scan the headings and the key figures within the text. And to help me with this, I'm going to be using Jenny AI and they are kindly sponsoring today's video. And Jenny AI was made specifically for high level academics and researchers with an emphasis on research writing. They have an autocomplete uh, tool that is designed to help you overcome writer's block by suggesting different lines of text as you write. It also cites all the information it suggests and it was built to be a research writing assistant to help you with your citations and uh, storing and organizing your references and finding new references really easily. I'm going to open up this paper in Jenny and it's a really long text. You can see my title, the keywords within my title. Within the title you can see the keywords, review, uh, outcomes and these give you an idea of what is to come in the text. I can also see that there's quite a short introduction and background so I know that it's not going to go into too much depth about the background information so that's also good to know before you start reading. And then I can keep going down and I can see the results, I can see that there's a discussion and there's also a conclusion. So it's a pretty standard piece of text. I can then go on to the AI chat and this is where the magic happens. I'm going to say what is the main structure of this paper and it's going to give me a a kind of a bit, a bit of a breakdown, like a really easy breakdown of what the structure is of this paper. It says that the main body begins with an abstract, there's an introduction, there's the methods, then there's the detail about the results, and then there's a discussion of the conclusion. And it's really broken it down for me in a really easy way that even if I didn't understand what was happening in the paper and it was a lot more complicated, I'll be able to do this really easily with the AI chat. Another really cool thing is that you're able to search through different sources, so your own paper, uh, your own collections that you might have, the web uh, or library of different papers, and this allows you to have a better scope of understanding when reading research papers. The second step is active reading, and this is where you do a lot of the work. There are three main action points within this second step. The first is highlighting with purpose. The second is annotating and taking brief notes. And the third is asking questions and reflecting on the text. Things like what gaps or critiques emerge within my question. Let's say I didn't know what questions to ask. I'm able to go to Jenny and it can give me some suggested questions about this PDF. Things like summarize, what are the key findings? What are common skeletal injuries? And all of these questions are specific to my text. So it makes it a little bit more personalized than just a general question. So that gives you a bit of a way of overcoming the mental block sometimes. And it's given me a summary of the main findings. It said that these are the treatment options and the study acknowledges inconsistencies and it kind of has given me both sides of the argument. I also want to ask further questions about the paper but I'm not sure what to ask. So I've said what are some questions I should ask myself when reading this paper and this is kind of like working backwards a little bit so I've got some questions that will really help me to understand the paper in a very high level way. Things like uh, what types of ankle fractures, were there any exclusion criteria or inclusion criteria or comparison groups or the, the definition of the measures. And I think this is a nice way of knowing what specific questions to ask to be able to work backwards and get a good understanding of your research paper. The third step is the effective note-taking step. And this step is really important because it's where you take what you've read and you put it somewhere 
in a way that helps you understand. So it's not just putting it somewhere and highlighting. It's not just putting it somewhere and just not going back, but putting it somewhere that allows you to come back to it later and remember what it is that you've read and remind yourself of what is important about that particular part. Again, there are three parts to this process. So the first is using a good system. Second is using digital tools. And the third is being concise, only writing down what's essential. To take notes effectively, you can also go to Jenny and open a new document. And it's going to ask you if you want just no outline and just to start with a blank document. You can have standard headings, so introduction, methods, results. I've used this a few times before. Or you can have creative headings. And the creative headings generate slightly different, um, interesting, more tailored headings based on what your prompt is. I personally like to go for the creative heading unless I don't have anything I want to write in terms of headings at all. So here I've said, what is the impact of the IFN in the management of ankle fractures? I'm writing a literature review. And wow, it's given me such a detailed um, set of kind of subheadings that allow me to begin thinking about this topic and the key points and the key areas that I want to focus on. Um, so it's, I can now start to write. And the great thing is I can begin to write in a very structured way where I'm reading information and I'm putting the relevant information in the relevant sections. Now, Jenny can also help you start off your sentences and start off uh, with overcoming writer's block. So it auto completes the first couple sentences. So what I'm able to do here is I'm able to maybe take a sentence that Jenny has provided me and then I'm able to take that reference, read the reference and also add my own information throughout. So after a certain amount of time, I'll have references that I've added from my own reading, references that Jenny has suggested as well. And all of those citations are compiled at the bottom of your document in the right format. Um, you can see that I can change it very easily here in terms of format to whatever I want, but it's all there for me. So it just makes life that little bit easier when I'm reading and trying to take notes and save it all in one place. Last but not least, step four is to review and integrate. And this is where you retain the information and you connect the ideas together. And this again comes in three parts. Number one is to revisit your notes regularly. Number two is to synthesize information and compare this with others. And number three is to apply this, so to use them in your outlines, in your research, or answering key questions within your fields. And for this step, what you want to do is go back to your notes uh, and try to put everything together. So that's where you're connecting what you've written before. If you've written notes in the past about a different topic, you can start to make links together. Now, I've taken all of my reading and I now want to create a note that I can come back to again and again. So I'm going to start to write down the purpose of the study that I read. So I'm going to write down three or four key points. So this purpose is to investigate something, to discuss something, to evaluate something, it just makes it really clear for me. And then I need to add the reference to my notes because it links everything together and it ensures that I know where I got my information from. So I can very easily use Jenny, go to the site feature and then add the paper into my notes really quickly, really easily. It's a very easy process to do. And then there's this really cool feature that allows you to change the reference in text citation to the narrative, which means that you're discussing the paper within the sentence. And this actually is a quite enhanced way of adding referencing uh, to your text. And then of course, all the references and citations are added at the bottom and you can very easily change the format as you go. So these four steps, the pre-reading, the active reading, the note-taking, and then the retaining information together will allow you to read properly, read productively, and actually remember what it is that you've read. And that is how a PhD reads. It really is as simple as that. It's not difficult, it's not complicated, it's just a series of steps to help you get from a point where you have something that you don't understand to a point where you are the experts. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you would like to try Jenny, then I'll leave the link for it down below, along with a little cheeky discount code for you to try the premium plan. There are so many different things that you can do with Jenny, so many different applications and different ways of using the tool in a very productive ethical way within education. If you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to click on my link down below. I hope to see you soon and have a great day. Bye.